And we're back. Back home. Not, well, new home, I guess. Got some rain falling and so on. I feel like what the previous decision might have some analogs with what happened to our character, because our character was was uh, changed by an unforeseen supernatural force, and they had to make a choice to continue their life in a new, new unrecognizable life where they can never return to who they were before. And it's like the old them is dead and stuff like that. So I feel like on some level, our character is somewhat motivated to get the other guy to go to the fire elemental place and try to, to choose to reinvent himself and try a new life instead of quitting altogether because that's the same choice that our character has made. Hello? An old publicity shot of you and Mori. How did this get here? How did this get here? Also, is that our chance to see Mar- Like, that's us, right? This is our chance to see our character in higher detail? Huh. Well, what's, what's today gonna be? That mannequin kind of seems like its torso is poorly shaped for you to slash there. Huh. See, fer she ferociously attacks the practice demon with her sword. There's not a drop of sweat on her. Good. You are awake. I was hoping to talk to you. Uh-oh. There is nothing to worry about, I assure you. You have completed your first field mission. You must have... thoughts. I am curious as to what they are. What are you feeling at the moment? You do important work. I can see that now. Yes. Our work is important. Of that, there is no doubt. For some of us, the unavowed is a calling. For others, a duty. But for you, I have seen you in action. I have seen you react under pressure. You were clearly meant for this life. So all those late night rehearsals were for nothing? You misunderstand me. Your old life, your life on the stage, prepared you for this. It made your mind flexible, open to new ideas and new ways of thinking. In this day and age, that is more important than ever. Now I'm just trying to imagine her explanation of how each of the other professions was really good for prepping you for this. Policeman's pretty easy, honestly. That's a pretty obvious one that's not, I don't even really need to come up with an explanation for that one. Uh, cause it's basically the same job almost, but now they're supernatural! Uh, bartender? I guess you, it's cause you, you deal with people and you understand people or something? Thank you, I'll do my best. That is all any of us can hope for. At any rate, I detect no falsehood within you. You spoke the truth to me. Thank you. I will return to my training now. Yes. Can you really detect falsehoods? Yes. Lies and falsehoods make jinns uncomfortable. We cannot abide the sensation. Of course, the ability to detect a lie is often useful in the field. So I have accepted it. There's a photo of me in my room. Who put it there? I do not know. I am not being facetious. I honestly do not know. This building has housed many agents over the centuries, and they too have been given gifts. Photographs and portraits of loved ones, precious possessions long since lost. We do not question it. We merely accept it and be thankful for it. This house just generates things? Any thoughts on the last mission? I believe we made the right choice with Jordan. When he disappeared across the void, he seemed content. Less conflicted, more determined. I am sure you will make a life for himself there. I grew up on Mars. I'm 120 years old. That is 
remarkable. I only detect faint traces of falsehood within you. I can see why you chose the stage as a profession. You truly believe the words you say. Still, please try not to lie to me again. Even in jest, think of fingernails on a chalkboard, but inside your brain. Jins cannot abide to speak a lie, let alone listen to one. So you can't speak a lie either. Indeed, no Jin could. It gives us physical pain. Of course, this means that Jins resort to mind tricks and verbal trickery. You're saying I shouldn't trust you? You can trust me to tell the truth. I have no desire to trick you or anyone else. My purpose is to serve the unavowed. Nothing more, nothing less. But if tricking me served the unavowed? <sighs> this is why nobody trusts the Jinn. One always looks for a hidden meaning. Mind games and wordplay are silly. I find them tiresome. So I have focused my efforts elsewhere. I hope you will grow to trust me. And that is the truth. I hope to earn your trust as well. Keep performing as you have, and you will have it. I have some questions about yourself. Me? What do you want to know? Where'd you learn to use a sword? Like with most things, I learned it at my mother's knee. Well, not literally. She was usually cutting off other people's knees, but the metaphor holds. Your mother used a sword too. Yes, but I prefer not to dwell. Ask me questions if you must, but not that. Never mind, I'll leave you to it. Thank you. That's a visual. I can't even highlight it. You'd think that the, that good description is making floating runes show up? Huh. It almost looks like a projection of a chalkboard. It's not that one, though. This one has different symbols on it. Now I'm wondering whether or not this guy, uh... Did he bring these pictures here or did the house just generate them? Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I was just reading some old texts with Firesight. Right. Firesight. Of course. Sarcasm received and understood. Sorry. It's a fire magic trick. Let's me read any book that was consumed by flame. It's a bit of a strain on the eyes, but beggars can't be choosers. So, what are you reading? It's an old Sumerian text about death magic. Really long, really boring. But I used to read books about S-Corp tax code for fun back when I was an accountant. I can handle boring. Ah well, see you at the meeting. One quick question. Fire away. Can I ask you about some of the pictures on your walls? Sure, I guess. Those two little girls, are they yours? Yeah, but I kind of don't want to talk about them now, if that's okay. What are you and Montana doing in that photo by the door? We were feeding the birds. What? You expected something else? There's nothing special about it. Just an ordinary day. The house. The mailbox says Beckett. You know what they say. If it's yours, put your name on it. But yeah, that's my house. Well, 50 years ago it was my house. Had to leave it behind when my powers kicked in. And the worst part? I was only five installments away from paying off the mortgage. I'm curious about that wedding picture. Well, I can't deny that's me. Almost 70 years ago that was taken. Could we not talk about this yet? picture of you at the desk. Yep, that's me. Hard at work. I can even remember the account I was working on. This dress manufacturer in Midtown. Booming business. Lots of numbers. Tons of paperwork. Took me months to sort through it all. I loved every minute of it.
If the picture's nothing special, why are you smiling? I am? Huh. Yeah, I guess I am. The picture was taken in, uh, 77, 78, around five years after my powers kicked in anyway. I'd buried myself down here, studying old books, experimenting with spells, and trying to come to terms with everything. Then Mandana dragged me out to the park. We fed the birds. It was nice, normal, ordinary. I felt human, and I can never forget that. Not ever. Talk to you soon, Eli. Yeah, same. He definitely fixates on humanness, specifically. Hey, what's up? I guess the djinn wouldn't fixate on that because they're not human to begin with. Although they could still be interested in other things, I guess. A photo appeared on my wall. Do you know how it got there? Huh, you too, huh? It wasn't long after I joined up that my first photo appeared. It scared the hell out of me. It's something to do with this building. It wants you to remember who you are, who you were. Don't think about it too hard. I've been here 50 years and I still don't know how it works. So you also just have photos. So that's why I thought like these ones aren't even because I was wondering like who's the weirdo that took that picture <laughs> of them feeding the birds? Like did the other did the other gen do that? Does he even go outside? Is that tree on fire? That tree looks on fire a little bit. You mentioned something about being an accountant? That's right. Back in my mundane days, back before my powers kicked in, I worked at the firm Weisel, Meltzer, and Sherman. There used to be a Beckett somewhere in the middle of that, but, well, you know. You were really an accountant. Yep, I was damn good at it, too. I made partner in five years, worked at the firm for another 20. You had to know things to be an accountant back then. No computers to do half your job for you. And to make partner, you had to crunch numbers in your sleep. Me? I ate them for breakfast. You make being an accountant sound so exciting. Well, it was. For me, anyway. Lining up numbers in my head, making them dance and do what I want. My boss used to say it was like magic. Turns out the old man was being literal. Who knew? Being an accountant is like doing magic. Yeah, throwing a fireball or preparing your tax return. Tomato, tomato. It's all just numbers, and I'm really good at equations and numbers. Always have been. Any thoughts on our last mission? I don't know. I just keep thinking about Jordan, wondering if he's okay. I'm gonna live a long time, but even when I'm dust in the wind, he'll still be out there. I only hope he's still himself. I'm curious about yourself. I guess if we're gonna work together, we should know each other. Ask away. Mondana told me you used to be mundane, like me. Someone's been telling tales out of school, huh? I used to have a pretty normal life. Then one day I set my office on fire with my mind. Then stuff happened and Mandana found me. She brought me here. The rest is, well, history. The dialogue's a little weird in that it's pretending that I only know he was mundane from Mandana, but he's said that like seven times to me. Also, I'm, I'm betting stuff happened is referring to uh, what he doesn't want to talk about. In particular, I'm guessing he might have burned his house down and his wife and kids might have even been in danger. I don't know if they... I don't know what happened, but he doesn't want to talk about them. And I bet that we'll get a similar response here. Stuff happened? Yep. What kind of stuff happened? I bared my soul enough for one day. Barely even know you. Let's talk about something else. Actually, I'll leave you to it. Practice makes perfect. Looks very un I can't even look at it. It looks like it was burned. Look at that. Look at the little ember right there, and I can't even look directly at it. No inspection to be had here. I guess we'll find out, maybe even in the in a mission or two or something, what happened to all that stuff. 
Gotta spend some more time with them. To send you aid would leave our own domains undefended. You know this, Kalash. Undefended against what? Ours is the only domain under attack. Your charter is quite clear. Recruitment is your responsibility. You accuse me of negligence. Just how many agents are currently in your employ? That is precisely the point. We have no agents to spare. I am sorry, Kalash. So am I, Aralax. New York is getting overwhelmed. When that happens, they will come for you. Then we must be ready when it comes. Aralax out. Major Hanum swallow you whole. Ah, you heard that, did you? I can't tell if Aralax sounds like a familiar voice actor or if he just sounds like a Salarian. <laughs> you said we were getting overwhelmed? Certainly. No doubt about it. It is no secret the threats have been escalating. I had hoped to appeal for aid and fill up our ranks. Alas, we are on our own. I respect Lady Aralax, but I should have known better. Never ask a dragon for anything. You will always regret it. That's a dragon's voice? That's the implication? Okay. Mm -hmm. Did I hear that right? You were speaking to a dragon? A dragon at the head of the Dublin branch of the Unavowed. Yes. She is... old. Stuck in her ways. I suppose the same could be said of most of us. What is that crystal? Some kind of magic phone? A magic phone? I suppose that is one way of describing it. There are shards of this crystal in every branch of the unavowed. It allows us to... communicate. For whatever good that does. Call the meeting. Yes. Duty calls. I have appealed once more for aid. It has been rejected. Huh. This is my surprised face. Why do you bother with those cowards, father? Show some respect. They are correct. Stubborn, but correct. You think they shouldn't send us help? I didn't say that. I said that there are rules, and they are following them. Each branch is responsible for its own defense and recruitment. In this respect, I have been negligent. So have all the branches, Father. A sudden rise in threats would have caught any city unprepared. And we're that city. Lucky us. I shall appeal again, rest assured. In the meantime, let us go over last night's events. I almost got crushed by a giant ice block. You seem fine to me. As for the others... Daughter, I trust you have recuperated from your ordeal with the fire elemental. I have. There do not appear to be any other... ill effects. So you aren't entirely positive? I took all the necessary precautions, but one is never entirely positive. Then I will have to accept that. However, I am deeply concerned that this mundane was able to acquire such a powerful spell in the first place. My demon started a cult that put Jordan in charge. Yes, but why? Why would a demon do such a thing? Why do demons do anything? To create havoc, obviously. Why else? No, this was too focused, too targeted. We are not dealing with a mindless spirit bent on chaos and destruction. This demon had a plan, a purpose. We need to learn what it was. And how do we do that? Funny you should say that. Ah, I know that look. You did as I asked, Mage Beckett? Yes, I did, sir. And it worked. Well, working. It's not quite done yet. What are you referring to? Oh, the ritual knife. I did a thaumaturgic scan on it. Thauma what? It's a, a magic thing. Checking objects for imbued magical energy. And I hit Paydirt. 
The knife was imbued with a very specific energy signature, your demon's energy to be precise. It's connected to you and you alone. That's why you were the only one who could use it properly, which means we can track it. I sense a butt coming. <clears throat> well, I can track the energy signature, but the demon's out of your body now. Its energy signature has changed. I can only track where it's been when it was in your body. So where did the demon take me? It was busy, I'll say that much. It was all over the map. I'm trying to narrow it down to the areas of greatest activity, but it's slow going. So far, the scan's got you pegged in two places. The Bronx, around Gun Hill Station, and Staten Island, by the ferry terminal. So we go and do what? Just look around? It's a tactic that's worked well for us so far. Very well. Check both areas for void activity and any sign of the demon. We'll show those idiots on the council what New York is made of. Meeting adjourned. I hate small talk, so I go to my pocket dimension to escape it. All right, bye. The hour grows late and the trail grows cold. Let us be off. The Bronx and Staten Island? <sighs> Good thing I refilled my Metro card last week. All right. We should also try to recruit people if we can. The last guy we didn't really get the option for. One, he was on fire all the time. And two, our choice was to either banish him to the Shadow Realm or kill him, which is not great for recruitment. But uh, if we are if we have some great threat we need to deal with, we, should, we need to see if we can find non-mundanes. Also, I'm just curious about the mechanic about where you're supposed to be able to pick characters. I kind of thought they would talk. And Donna counts the cracks on the subway floor. Eli's engrossed in a book. The last time they were more talkative. Think about today. Okay. Think about direction wonder why you haven't before. Oh, we can go back to East Village. We can go to, to the Bronx or Staten Island. I'm curious. Uh, let's go to St. George Terminal, Staten Island. Yeah, that's fun. I was gonna say, somehow I don't think the train took me here. <laughs> We're here at 8 p.m. I know that song. Uh, Lowlands Away, isn't it? Yes, an old shanty. Being at sea just reminds me of younger days. Well, don't let me stop you. We could use a bit of cheer on a dreary night like this. No. I shall not lose myself in the past. Let us proceed. Right. More hints at her past, where she seems to be with her mom on a, like, what seems like a pirate ship, basically. Mandana's gaze keeps drifting towards the water. She's smiling slightly. Eli is still bone dry, despite the rain. So when, what was my sleeping cycle like? It was daytime last mission, and I went to sleep and woke up before we left for this mission, but now it's 8 p.m., so I've got a lot of questions about the timeline of everything. Ferry terminal's deserted this time of night. Seriously? It took forever to get here. Let's finish investigating here first. I was gonna investigate the terminal. The promenade leads west towards a large sculpture. Is the large sculpture the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> the walkway extends east towards a marina. Let's look at the marina. Summoner, 
You have made a grave error. Return me to my world immediately. Or what? You are in my control. Release me. Send me back. You summoned me in the middle of battle. I am the general commander. Without me, my soldiers are doomed to failure. I know this general. It is why I called you. So you summoned me to mock me? Oh, very human. It is no secret our efforts are going poorly. Perhaps even futile. They poison our waters. They destroy our resources, our homes, our lives. So we fight. Outnumbered and outmatched, but what choice do we have? Would you rather complain, or would you rather win? We don't want to win. We want to live. If you have counsel to offer, I am listening. This is going to be fun. Was that? One of the merfolk? I cannot say for certain. Ow, wow, wow. Oh, take it easy. Yes, try and get your bearings. You can lean over the rail if you need to, you know, throw up. I guarantee nobody will notice the smell around here. You seem all right. Good. Did I hear you right? Was that a mermaid? One of the merfolk, yes. The demon summoned it. But how? To open such a path takes tremendous energy. Energy that a demon alone should not possess. Such a thing is impossible. And yet, I spoke it. So it must be true. So, more people exist. Yes, and the less you express your surprise at every supernatural encounter, the faster we can get on with things. Speaking of, let us venture forward. We will learn nothing standing here in the rain. Wow, game getting snarky with me, huh? Alright, so I misinterpreted the conversation at first, because at first I thought he was going to... When he said that was why he summoned him, I thought that meant, like, he's going to summon the merfolk here, and then just trap him here when he was supposed to be leading a war, dooming his army, and then that would mean that the merfolk would still be here, and would be mad at me, and potentially trying to attack me while we're here because I doomed his army by summoning him. What's up? Who are the merfolk? Well, I've never actually met one, but from what I've read, they used to come to our world quite often. There are countless stories about mer creatures helping a drowning sailor. They were a fairly peaceful race. Going by your vision, I'm not sure that's accurate anymore. Do you know anything about this area? Staten Island. It's like a big, small town, isn't it? I used to have an aunt who lived out here, back when it was called Richmond County. She's probably dead now. At 132 years old, she'd have to be. Oh shit, I mixed up Staten Island with Ellis Island, didn't I? Yep, can you tell I'm from California? <laughs> What do you think we should do now? We only just got off the ferry. Let's take a look around first. Could you fire read something for me? Sure. What do you need? And eh, never mind. Right behind you. So that's the thing. So keep that in mind for the future. That's a tool we can use. Yes. Or when we see something get burned, I guess. Or we need to find a document that wasn't that one homeless shelter or something, maybe. Who are the merfolk? My father used to tell me stories of them. Millennia ago, they would traverse the void between our worlds quite freely. They were a peaceful, generous people. Many a drowning sailor was saved by the lucky chance of a merfolk being nearby. But, judging by your vision, that has since changed. You know anything about this area? This was all farmland, once upon a time. At least, that is the way I remember it. Over 150 small farms, 
and one palatial estate belonging to him. You're going to complain about Captain Billup again, aren't you? It is not a complaint. It is the truth. Have you heard the myths surrounding that man? It is a total falsehood. The myth of Captain Billup. Tell me. Here we go. Hush. Hundreds of years ago, the ownership of this island was in dispute between New York and New Jersey. So the Duke of York made a challenge. If the island could be circumnavigated by a vessel in 24 hours, it would be given to New York. The story goes that Captain Christopher Billup performed this feat, and thus Staten Island belongs to New York to this day. But it did not happen that way. The city was under attack by the Bish Khan. My mother commandeered Billup's vessel. She chased it around the whole island before killing it. Billup was drunk in his cabin the entire time, and yet he was awarded a 1,600-acre estate. Still, one must not dwell, as tempting as it may be. One must not dwell. You, you dwell. <laughs> rest, be, rest assured, you dwell. Your mother was a ship captain? Of a sort. I believe the correct term is pirate captain. But I do not wish to dwell on the past. Not at the moment. Ask me later, when we are finished here. All right. Agreed. Back to it. You can go to Richmond Terrace. There's... It goes back to the ferry. I think that the actual pier... Had nothing here, yeah? Nothing to look at here. Just the vision. 